Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Tyson, Tom Wells, and Alex King here on this Friday, November the 30th, 2018. It's 8 a.m. New York time, 5 a.m. Los Angeles time, 1 p.m. London time, and 12 midnight in Sydney, Australia. So whatever time it is where you're located, thank you so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. And as usual, we are live streaming to the Law of Attraction Change My Life group, although that's actually going to be expanding pretty soon if my tests prove out the way I think they're going to prove out. We're going to have even larger coverage than that. But uh, not that that is small, because it's not, because there's like 92,000 people in the Law of Attraction Change mm-hmm. My Life group. But uh, we're, we're mm-hmm. going to start expanding it even bigger than that pretty soon if my tests work out right. So this is this is an exciting time. So, Tom, how you doing? We haven't talked in a week, but how is it going for you? Uh, it's been a good week. Lots of changes, lots of uh, learning and uh, exploring and interacting with a bunch of groups of people and lots of private sessions with people. It's been a good week. All yeah. right. Good. Lots of reading. I'm reading some incredible books right now. I'm really happy about it. Excellent. Oh, yeah. well, that sounds yeah, like yeah. fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I'm I- always reading something that's like really my, I call it my leading edge of creative expansion. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Very good. I can't say. Yeah. You know, I figured that's, that's, you know, in fact, that was one of the questions I had for the question and answer one, because we were each supposed to bring two questions today. So, mm-hmm. Right. So one of mine said, why are we, why are we here in this earth realm? And, uh, and that, that's one of my answers to that, you know, for, for creative expansion, you know, mm. that's one of the main reasons. All right, good. And we can elaborate on that if we end up talking about my questions. But I'm anxious to hear your guys' questions, but more anxious to hear our listeners' questions. Well, well, first we got to also bring Alex in because she's she's been chiming in for the yes. background. But Alex, uh, how are you doing? We we talked on Tuesday, but how's it been going the last few days? It's been going good. I've been rather popular this uh, this week. Ooh, popular. That, yeah, that, that, and a that... lot of uh, interactions with uh, high school friends. That's a good thing for somebody Ooh. who's got uh, agoraphobia. I mean, that, that'll help get you out yeah. there just because you're getting that, that good I mean, it's all online and on the phone. Yeah, but still, know. even so, it's, it's human interaction. That's a good thing. Yeah. Really mm-hmm. good. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you've had a good few days for sure then. I have, yes. All right. <laughs> so fo- fo- folks are just contacting you spontaneously? Yeah, right out of the blue. That's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I've, I've been having a bunch of that too. For some reason, people who I hadn't talked to for a long time are suddenly mm-hmm. I'm talking to them. Maybe it's the holiday coming on. You know, and people are, uh, you know, they're reaching out. It's these shorter days and everything. We need more people in our lives. True. I mean, I do. <laughs> well, that's what the holidays are about. The holidays are about uh, friends and family and love and sharing and giving and all that kind of good stuff. So why not? You know? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and eggnog. And eggnog, that's right. <laughs> Very important, that eggnog. Out, I can't have eggnog. Oh. Uh, oh. I can't do I know. I can't do dairy, and so I don't do eggnog. Well, I'll, I'll have the eggnog yeah. for both of you, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so we're going to both eat the clam chowder for me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's weird. I can do the clam chowder. I can do chocolate milk, but I no. Really? No on the eggnog. No eggnog. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Makes you break out in hives or something. No. <laughs> no. That's something else. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get the paint picture I'm painting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yes. I can see what you're laying down. Yeah. There, there, are, there are times when you can try to avoid the TMI for good reasons. So, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we're going to be doing uh, one of our favorite things lately is to do Q&As uh, with the uh, members of the Law of Attraction Change My Life group. And we're also kind of um, expanding the concept a little bit because the three of us decided we're all going to bring a couple questions of our own to ask. So um, this is going to be a true interaction because we're going to have questions flying out of our ears here. Um, and we, we already have people saying hello to us in the group. So hello, Nasha. Hello, Elizabeth. And uh, more and more people coming in. So that's good. And uh, Nasha already has her question ready. It's regarding money. Okay, good. Um, so, <laughs> looks like okay. Yeah. So people are starting to come in. Let's let's start with. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll do like one of our questions, and then we'll go to uh, the group and see what questions we have there. So, you, Tom, you, you said you were saving yours up. What, what's your first question? Bring up your question. 
Well, I, that was the one I just mentioned is why are we here in this earth realm? Why did, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like. So ultimate questions. Look, look, it's happening. Yeah, so it is. Forget about <laughs> it. Yeah, it is sort of the ultimate question. But somebody asked me that, uh, what was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, talking to this guy from Germany who's like in his 30s, and we were on Skype for two and a half hours, and that was that was one of his main questions was, he says, Tom, why do you think we're here in this earth realm? And I go, oh, well, um. <laughs> so I started answering that. and So I said, that's a good question for today. Well, I love the answer so what, that uh, Neil Donald Walsh gave in The Secret. Do you remember that? Uh, no. In the, in the no, movie I The don't. Secret, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, when he made his first appearance in that movie, um, he appears there and he says, there's no blackboard in the sky. And then, he, then there's an actual blackboard behind him. And he says, there's no mm-hmm. blackboard in the sky that says, uh, my name is Neil Donald Walsh, a, a handsome guy who, and then there's an, there's an underline, and the universe fills yeah. in what your underline is so that you know what your purpose is in life. But there's no <laughs> blackboard in the sky. So your purpose, mm. he says, is what you say it is. Uh, I thought that was a pr- like profound it. answer. You know, it, your your purpose yeah. is what yeah. you say it is, and I think that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That really goes along with a lot of things. Um, you know, because we can we can wonder and struggle and worry about anything we want to, but is it ultimately simply up to us to decide what we're going to do next? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. moment by moment. Mm-hmm. And it's and who else can tell us really anything? You know, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of always in our court in a certain way because we're living beings, and we always have this option to say, well, I think I'm going to just choose this, and we choose something, and then there there's our life. You know, whatever we yeah. keep choosing, but we're also receiving, right? So, so here we are receiving and choosing. So we're co-creating, and yet, to me, what one of the answers I came up with is. Uh, <clears throat> what this Navajo elder was, his grandfather of this 16-year-old girl, uh, Navajo girl, was <clears throat> she was really hooked on drugs and struggling like crazy in her life. And her grandfather took her aside one day and said, Honey, you know, <clears throat> the reason we're here is for the sake of beauty. He said, we're, he said, we're born into beauty as beauty for a joyful life. And when you look at mm. when you look at the amazing precision of the whole universe, and you look at trees and flowers and animals and love and f- the taste of food and so many things, you can see that there's beauty like trying to emerge all over the place all the time. You know, there's just yeah. so much of it, and there's order behind everything. You know, there's they're finding the whole universe is based on incredible geometric order that you just can't even fathom how everything is so precisely aligned. Like, you know, the way the planets are in relation to each other. If the sun wasn't at the distance it is from the earth, we would either all freeze or we'd all burn up. But everything, why is it all so perfect? Right. You know, I once heard that it's within 300 miles, that if we were 300 miles closer or 300 miles further from the sun, there wouldn't be life on this planet, you know. Not as mm. as we know it. So how come everything is so precise like that? So life to me seems like we're here f- for some incredible sense of appreciating beauty. You know, when you get into appreciation and you allow yourself to relax into it, it's sort of you can run your whole life just on your appreciation alone, just on, you know, allowing yourself to be happy for whatever is happening. Not that we're always happy, but you know, we default to back feeling good and to allow things to unfold in a beautiful way. So to me that's that's a lot of why I'm here, you know. And then just keep expanding. You know, just keep <laughs> growing that beauty. <laughs> when you talk about the the, the earth being uh can has a range of like three hundred miles either way from the from the sun and and if it's off more than that. And I don't know if that's a scientific fact. I, I'm not sure that it is actually, but let's assume that it is for the sake of discussion. To me that's a positive thing. And the reason yeah. I say it's a positive thing is because really it, sh- it shows it's a, it shows just how amazing our collective powers are as beings to visualize the absolutely perfect arrangement of the solar system. And 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 mm-hmm. I mean because everything's created right by by the thought process. So we all created this this solar system with you know that exact 
distance from the sun so that everything would work out perfectly. That, that's a pretty high level of precision. We ought to pat ourselves on the back for how good we are at manifesting <laughs> stuff. Yeah, like, we're we're yeah, good at we this stuff. We haven't pride ourselves. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, we have one. We actually have two questions so far um, from the audience. Um, and one of them is directly related to the question that you raised, Tom. So let's bring that one in. Robin asks, um, well, she says, good morning, everybody. And then she says, what if one wants what the universe has for us versus what we think we should try to manifest? So in other words, c contrasting, is it something where what the universe wants for us or is it what we want to try to manifest? Which, which is, well, I guess she's asking what the priority is. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Go, Alex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. I mean, I have an answer, but I wanted to give you guys a, a chance to go first. So. <laughs> I already got to answer the last one. <laughs> My oh, own question. For, for me, the answer is pretty straightforward. And it ties back to mm -hmm. what Neil Donald Walsh said. Neil Donald Walsh, of course, for those who aren't um, familiar with the name, he's the author of the Conversations with God series, a series of, I think it was seven books in which he uh, laid out his understanding of metaphysics and spirituality and so forth, and uh, actually did so uh, with these dialogues that he had uh, with his higher power, with, with um, source, with God, whatever you want to call it. And in he, he's the one who points out that our purpose is whatever um, we choose it to be. And I think that's actually literally true. Um, so when we mm -hmm. ask the question, well, is it what the universe wants from me? Or is it what I want? I, I, Abraham actually answers that one, too. The universe wants for us what we want for ourselves. The universe yeah, never judges us. That's what us. I was going to say. The, the universe is always saying, uh, it, the universe never never passes a moral judgment. It never says what's right or wrong. It, it never says um, what you should like or what you should dislike. It leaves all that up, mm -hmm. up, up to us. It supports us every step of the way by liking all of our choices. And that can be a little confusing because when, when it likes our choice and we don't like our choice, we, we're in disagreement and we feel lousy. But nevertheless, the universe is there saying, yeah, go, you, you want that? Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was listening to a, a conversation, a dialogue, a really interesting one, which uh, you guys may have heard or may not. I don't know. It's a conversation between Abraham, as voiced by Esther, and Wayne Dyer while he was still alive. And this was one of the topics that came up in that conversation. And, and Wayne mm -hmm. Dyer was asking about, you know, what it's like on the other side. And Abraham was, was explaining at one point, Abraham said, well, you know, everybody is fixated. Their attention is fixated on here, on Earth. Abraham was trying to make the point that this is where all the good stuff is happening. And they said, you know, non-physical beings spend all of their time just focused entirely on this fascinating thing called Earth. So, you know, clearly the, the, the attention to what we're doing here is huge on the other side, okay? Mm -hmm. And if we understand yeah. that and we understand that they're, they're rooting us out with whatever choices we make, then it really becomes clear to me. The, the answer is it's whatever we choose, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, choose wisely perhaps so, because it's your life, but nevertheless, it's whatever yeah. you choose. <laughs> <laughs> this question of are we letting the universe unfold for us <clears throat> the life that is ideal for us or are we feeling we're, we're needing to control it a lot you know, that we need to always put in our two cents and abraham has said so many times that you've put so much into your vortex already that you could live lifetimes and never exhaust all that you've already asked for because you've been asking for lifetimes and if that's the case and then what they say is that what what source does for us, the universe, as we call the universe, is it unfolds it in the most perfect way possible for us. And so in a way, it invites us to relax and trust the fact that, look, it's all orchestrated for you. And that's what I've heard said so many times. The, the universe or source is making sure that it's going to be the best possible life you could have if you can relax enough to receive it. And that's so key, you know, it's like, it's, there's this thing you might call a divine arrangement. It's like, everything is going to be okay. Yes. But we, but, but I, I know if I can only speak for myself, I get so concerned that it's on my shoulders. It's up to me to make sure my life works out that mm -hmm. I interject my effort in there too much instead mm -hmm. of, 
instead of waking up and saying, I wonder what amazing things will happen today. I wonder how good my life could get today. And then just be in appreciation of everything I already have. And then look for things as they unfold to be coming to me by wondrous intervention, by wondrous grace, by by beauty wanting to unfold in my life. And I think I think that's letting the universe bring me its gifts. You know, mm-hmm. like Abraham has said, blessings are constantly raining down on us, but we put up our umbrella. <laughs> so like Ooh, to me I it's like, like that. <laughs> it's like what? You know what? So it's really like I could trust that much and things would actually work out. I could trust that much. Mm. I don't have to like try so hard. And you think about before the day of 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 notebooks and computers and everything People couldn't even write down all their wishes. They just had True. to, you know, <laughs> they just had yeah. to like walk around and, and I bet it, in a way it could have been easier to, to just receive before we tried so hard to mm-hmm. organize our lives, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I kind of, I kind of love that. That that's one of my dreams is to go live in a little house on a beach somewhere where I don't have anything to do except surf and walk on the sand and, you know, make love and, pet my dog you know i mean it's like just a beautiful <laughs> well, and eat and eat you know and watch the stars at night you know i mean yeah. there's life is kind of pretty amazing if we if we're in a really simple place well this is true we have uh, more questions pouring in here so let's get to the next one this is from nasha and she asks i'm trying to manifest money and she laughs on the contrary i'm way too broke why and what make me so broke? In spite of I'm trying my best for my needs to be met, I'm talking not about leisure. I'm talking about needs. Where am I going wrong? And then she says, well, I guess every life is a different purpose. Um, but it's, an, it, it's a common question. The, the Probably the most common thing that people want to manifest and, and struggle the most with mm-hmm. is manifesting money. So I'm going to throw it out to the panel. You know, what, What's the solution? How, how do we uh, address her particular situation and the, the the situation in general about attracting money. I think she needs to um, get specific. Like, okay, I need such and such amount for this bill or I need such and such amount for this, you know, grocery bill or whatever. I think, I think being specific is, um, is key. Why is that? I don't know. I just feel like if you just say, Oh, I just want money. Like, you could find a penny on the floor. That's like, true. <laughs> this that, is true. That could be what you manifested. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, find a penny, pick it up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's a good why point. I think being specific, specific is key. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. That, that's that's very true. Tom, any insights on, on uh, attracting money? Well, I think one of the biggest understandings I'm getting about money is that money is just energy like love or anything that we want to come into our life and there's a level of of ease and and peace of mind and relaxation that will allow money to flow to us a lot more easily or allow doors of opportunity to open up because we get into an elevated state of ease you know of happiness Mm -hmm. i know i know when i'm just like my most trusting or my most enjoying of life that's when I meet the most cool people. That's when I have the most amazing conversations. And that's when money comes to me. I mean, I had a friend just give me several thousand dollars the other day just because he had heard that I was struggling a little bit in one area, and he's a multimillionaire. And he just called me up and said, I want to give you some money. And I was like, oh, okay. You know? And I'm not, I'm, not dest- I'm not destitute. I'm not destitute, but but I felt like that that was really nice of him. You know, But it happened – just because I I was putting the the uh, call out, you know, for the for that money to come, mm-hmm. but I was in a place of I think re- great receptivity because I really was in a place of trust, more trust than usual. So that's that's one way that money comes. Um, yeah, I agree. I, it is one of my it is one of my biggest uh, things that I still am learning is how to allow money to really flow. But when I mm-hmm. used to let it flow, when I was making six figures for years and years and years and years. I did set a goal every morning. It was a job that I did that I could make, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred every day. And as but I, if I didn't set a goal in the morning of how much I was going to make by the evening, 
I would I would often be struggling. I'd be struggling sometimes up to one o'clock in the day, wondering where how come I've only made three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars. And then mm-hmm. I would say, oh, I, don't, I didn't set my goal yet, you know. Mm-hmm. And then at one o'clock, I would set a goal of like, okay, I'm going to make twelve hundred dollars today. And by five o'clock, I would make the money. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, yeah. I was in an environment where you could make the money, mm-hmm. you know. But it took it it without that goal, and and then I would just stick to it. I would just stay to that goal. I would I would just say that's what I'm making. That's what I'm making. That's going to come. And then it would, and it would come by miracles. I mean, every day it would be like something amazing would happen that would enable mm-hmm. that, that might come to me. I was buying and selling things. But mm-hmm. so, you know, the right, the right person would come along with the right yeah. situation. It was just, it was just beautiful. And I'm, I'm trying to apply that now to my coaching business and doing workshops. And it's a different thing mm-hmm. to let the money come now. Mm-hmm. How about you, Walt? Well, um, I, as we were talking about this, I was thinking about some of the teachings of Neville Goddard on uh, not money, but just in general about attracting things. And a, a, there were two thoughts, really, that were going through my head. First thought was, this isn't really Neville. This is just kind of in general. Um, m- attracting money is no different from attracting anything else. As Abraham likes to say, uh, it, attracting a castle is just as easy as attracting a button. The only reason that that one seems more difficult than the other is because we decide that one seems more difficult than the other. And it's understandable. Mm-hmm. It seems more difficult because we really want that castle, but there are buttons everywhere. You know, so buttons, no big deal. <laughs> Castle's not so, diff- not so easy. It's a lot more difficult, we think. And, and because mm-hmm. we think it's more difficult, it is more difficult. Um, mm-hmm. so, so that's the first thought that goes through my mind. The second thought, and this is where Neville comes into it. I think that since... Money is, attracting money is just like attracting anything else. And and you're right, Tom, money is energy. It's all energy. Everything that we're attracting is energy when it really comes down to it. All things are energy that have been kind of solidified into a particular thing that, you know, stays a particular thing because that's what we shaped it into. Um, Because of that that nature of, of what it is that we're attracting and how we're attracting, we can focus on what result we want associated with that thing and it will produce it'll produce the same kind of result so like the neville approach um one of the first things neville talks about is how he attracted a steamship ticket from new york city to barbados this was in the 1930s no internet (laughs) there there were barely any telephones i mean it was like there was there was nothing (laughs) you know (laughs) you couldn't fly there hardly the the commercial air air traffic had not really uh, taken off yet if you forgive the pun yeah um they uh there just wasn't (laughs) (laughs) it just hadn't happened yet yeah so he didn't he could probably have written home because he like i said he was from barbados so he could have written home, but he would have had to wait for the mail to get there, right? Because it was not like two-day delivery. Mm-hmm. It would have taken him probably a week, right. two weeks to get there. But he met up with this guy named Abdullah, who plays a major role in his life. And Abdullah teaches him to uh, create what I would call, Cindy Chavez and I call, a vignette. Um, a, a little short scene that represents what it feels like immediately after the thing manifests. And so he created mm-hmm. a little vignette, a little short 10-second, 15-second video in his mind of what it's like when he actually gets to Barbados. Because he knew Barbados. Mm-hmm. He grew up there. You know, he knew the, land, the island. And, and so that's what he ended up doing. And within a very short period of time, he received an unexpected telegram from his brother saying, we want you home for Christmas. We're sending you a steamship ticket so you can come home for Christmas. So he manifested Aww. a steamship ticket by visualizing what it would be like to get there for Christmas. Um, and mm-hmm. we've all done stuff like that. You know, so so for Nasha, um, I mean, I know you've you've manifested things. And my re- my reaction to you would be, look at the last thing that you manifested. Um, I actually know the story of what she, what she manifested last, but I'm not going to, sh- to tell her story. But nevertheless, she manifested something really, really cool. Well, mm-hmm. do the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. do the same thing. Just just create that same scene and just keep playing that scene. It's the result that you want. I mean, we, we like to talk in terms of, of attracting something and, you know, getting passionate about it and so forth. But, I mean, it's kind of hard to get passionate about money. You know, it's, well, it's money. You know, 
Like, great, I can spend the yeah. money, you know, but, oh, wow, I am so in love with money. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but we right. can get passionate about what we're going to spend it on. You know, so you're trying to attract the money for a particular purpose. That's what you want to be focusing on. You want to get excited about the thing that you know you can get excited about because you're already excited about it. You know, so you just keep, mm-hmm. keep working that, um, playing that, that little uh, video, that little vignette, that little motif in your mind. And I, I honestly think that's the best way to do it. There's one other thing too in that in this I'm finding that what I'm working on is I'm I'm becoming an emotional clearing facilitator, and I think that if if in your family of origin you had the example given to you by your parents or somebody who was one of your main caretakers about how hard it was to have money, and that you know or maybe you grew up in a family where you got that message a lot, <clears throat> then you you know you've got this internalized emotion that keeps on running in you. And it's, t- it's telling you, you know, that it's difficult mm-hmm. and you're having, you're having fear because of that. You're having doubt and, and wonder and worry about creating it. And uh, I think we need to process those old fears too. You know, we need to mm-hmm. let that stuff, you know, be felt in us and accept that, you know, that's how it was and that allow those feelings to be okay and to feel them. And then we, they, we can begin to release the pressure that we have on that stuff. You know, we start to start to let go of how hard we're holding on to the same way that we learned it from our parents, Mm -hmm. you know, to be, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that money, that money doesn't come easy. You know, there's so many things in our society that say that, you know, you only get money by hard work and, you know, a lot of people have that message, but you notice these people who grew up in really wealthy families where everything was easy and there was always plenty of money. They tend to often be the people who create a ton of money, you know, and they continue to keep the family legacy going of tons of money coming in because they, they've been taught from the time they were little kids that money's just always there exactly. and there's plenty of it, yeah. you know. So we got to overcome the, the conditioning we had <laughs> as kids. Mm-hmm. But, but how, do we, how do we get through those, those original messages we got in our family when we were growing up? And that's that's done by going inside and letting ourselves feel those feelings of lack and then allowing ourselves to be okay with it. And they will naturally transform. Those feelings can naturally transform into feelings. And abundance then will flow into our lives more as we let go of these old things, these mm-hmm. old patterns of conditioning. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's another way. Yeah. Uh- we, Shireen has a question, and we're going to get to it, but there's a follow-up from Elizabeth about what we were just talking about, so I'm going to insert that one here. Elizabeth asks, what do you mean by a place of great re- receptivity, Tom? A place of great receptivity? Yeah. Well, yeah. if you um, – let's say that you, you um, get out a journal, a piece of paper, and you start writing everything that you appreciate about your life the way it is right now, you know, and you and you look for say the abundance that's happening in your in your life. You know, I oh I I have my health, or I have a certain amount of money that is already in the bank, or I've got food in the refrigerator. I've got these these wonderful friends in my life. Um, you start writing down things that you appreciate, so you count your blessings, and that opens our heart. That opens our heart and our minds to be receptive to even more. You know, because we start creating a vibration inside of ourselves, allowing that vibration of, of receptivity to our own well-being. So we open ourselves by trusting that life wants to take care of us. Life wants to give us beauty. Life wants to give us money. Life wants us to be successful. But how do we, how do we just be receptive to that is that we start being appreciative of the things we already have and then naming the things that we are open to receiving and I don't know, I do it just by, I guess it's a level of trust. I just, I just say I'm here to allow the universe to take care of me and it, it it wants to give me wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And so being in that place, that's receptivity to me and and no, and knowing, I mean, I like the fact that Abraham said 100% of your job as a human being is to be receptive to your own well being. Mm. Good point. One hundred percent of your job every day is to open your heart to receive the gifts that the universe wants to give you. But you, you know, we got to be so relaxed to receive that. We have to chill yeah. out like, and just go, "Hey, maybe this isn't such a struggle." 
maybe I'm trying way, way too hard and I worry way, way too much. And I mm-hmm. think about it way too much. I got to go have more fun. Go general, <laughs> you know, go, you know, listen, listen to more music, dance more, hang out with your friends more, you know, do, do things that will make you feel like life is fun. You know, well, receptivity. we're always worried about it. <laughs> Receptivity is what Alex was doing this week. I mean, she was talking earlier about how she was getting all these contacts from friends all over the internet. I mean, you were, you were in receptive mode the last few days, weren't you? I have been, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good yeah. place to and be. And I think that comes from uh, the clearing session that, that you guys, well, not you, uh, Tom, but Walt did earlier last week, I think. I was I, I participated, so I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I think that's. That's part of it too. The one that Linda okay. Armstrong led. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. did a group clearing session. Yeah, she did a group clearing session on money. Interestingly enough, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you and you noticed a difference, Alex, ever since then. Yes, I have. Yeah. Wow, that's sweet. It was good. It was a good right? session. We got a lot of good feedback on that one too. I think we clear. It's like the, they say it's like peeling the layers of the onion. You know, you 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 clear a little bit, and then you clear a little bit more, and you clear a little bit more, and before long, you're just not as congested as you were with work. You're not <laughs> mm-hmm. as congested with with struggle and trying so hard, and and you start to more and more re- realize that, you know, maybe I can just receive. And I don't have to be struggling so hard to be the creator of everything. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, Shireen asked a question, and th- this is another one of those more general questions, and it's a good one. She says, how do you cope with life hardships and with not really loving yourself? So really two questions in one there. Either one of you want, want to take a stab at that one. How do you cope with life hardships and with not really loving yourself? Well, I think you um, probably have trouble loving yourself because of the life hardships. Those go hand in hand mm. in, in, you know, and also low, low self-esteem has a, has a play in it too. So it's, um, as far as law of attraction goes, I, I would just ask the universe for, you know, guidance. It's always good going inside. That's because that's what yeah. it is. When you go to the universe, you're going inside, going inside is always a good approach. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, with um, with loving yourself, the thing that <clears throat> excuse me, the thing that has worked best for me has been uh, what they call mirror exercises. And mm-hmm. I'll see if I can mm-hmm. find the link and, and plug that in for you. <clears throat> excuse me for you, Shireen. But uh, mirror exercises, you do those for a thirty day period, and if you do them faithfully and and really work on <laughs> saying those those three very difficult words to yourself while you're looking at yourself in the eyes, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how hard it is the first day or even the second day. But if you stick to it. It's weird. <laughs> it's very weird. No doubt about it. But if you stick to it, it, it pays off. And you, your self-esteem improves. You start to feel more confident. And uh, plus, at the end of about 20 to 30 days, all the negative self-talk disappears, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. I mean, I had had that negative self-talk going on for years. Did the 30-day program on the mirror exercises. And all of a sudden, my head was quiet. I thought, wow, mm-hmm. this is spooky. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I'm Lonely used to all the here. voices. The voices are gone. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, it's really, really good stuff. So, yeah, I'll I'll get the link for mirror exercises and plug that in for you, Shireen. And uh, I think that once you focus more on loving yourself and, and spending more time on appreciating who you are, I think you're going to find that your life hardships start to shift. Which is mm-hmm. kind of what you were alluding to, Alex, that the two are connected. Yeah. I think they really are connected because um, the more that we love ourselves, we've just changed the whole thought dynamic. And when you change the thought dynamic, mm-hmm. you're changing the physical world dynamic that must manifest out of it. Um, it's hard to predict in advance exactly how it's going to change other than to say it's going to change for the better. And yeah. it, it'll happen in, in unexpected ways, synchronicities and you know, all these kinds of weird things that happen. We, we look back and we say, what? What happened? I don't understand. <laughs> but they happen. <laughs> that's the way, when you do this stuff, especially in the early stages, that's the way it works. All You get these weird results that start happening. But they're, they're results for the good if you're focusing on, you know, taking care of yourself, loving yourself, feeling good mm-hmm. about yourself, being kind to yourself. That's a big part of it. 
boy, oh boy, yes. you got to be kind to yourself. Look at all the different ways we're rough on ourselves. I mean, even the question, I mean, and I'm not criticizing you for the question. I'm just simply pointing out, how do you cope with life's hardships? We just beat ourselves up by saying, oh, we have all these hardships. You know, that That's being rough on yourself. We don't think about it that way, but that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, God, life is so hard on me. And, and as I'm saying that, I'm making it hard on me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a strange thing. It's one of the... It's one of the best times to uh, recognize the value of meditation, because mm-hmm. if you can go in, if you if you create a, a, a daily practice of meditation, even if it's only ten minutes or fifteen minutes, you begin to give yourself a chance to go to a place where your thoughts aren't really constantly there. So you're you're seeing if something is inside you that emerges when you quit trying so hard with all your thoughts. And, and when you're in that place of stillness, you're just following your breath and your eyes are closed and you're letting yourself relax into into that place inside, then you can start to realize that that love is naturally inside yourself. And I think we have to make peace with the fact that we sometimes are feeling bad. You know, we, we've, we have to make – there's this thing that Abraham said, make peace, make peace, make peace with what is right now. And I think that's so key for me is that I I have to feel like it's okay that I don't feel good all the time. It's okay to be to just accept all my feelings, make peace with all of my feelings. You know, there's this famous saying, let all your feelings be welcome at your fire. You know, and if if we can make peace with even the things that seem the most difficult for us, then we can be able to then be more receptive to the fact that there's good things happening in our life. And we get out our journal and start writing all the things that we're grateful for, all the things we appreciate. And we start realizing that, you know, maybe, maybe we can, maybe we can love the fact of all the things that are working good in our lives. You know, Mm -hmm. we start feeling better about, about the things that we quit seeing things as, what a struggle it is and how difficult it all is and how much I don't love myself. Oh, well, I guess I do love this about myself. And I guess I do mm-hmm. love this about myself. Or I write down 10 things you do like about yourself, you know, and each day write down something you like about yourself or about your life, you know, or about another friend. If even if you just write about things you appreciate about other people, it'll bring alive in you the things you appreciate about yourself and about your life. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. Nasha also added a really uh, poignant comment. She says, while what we say in the mirror, we, we need to mean it too. Oftentimes I've noticed we do things in autopilot rather than feeling it deeply. And that's true, especially mm-hmm. with the mirror exercise. It's really easy to just kind of go through the motions and not actually look in your own eyes and not actually talk to yourself. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, I, I have to do this, so I'm just going to do it. No, no, she's right. You got you to mean it. You got to dive into it because that's where you mm-hmm. actually get the power out of it. I, I like this thing, become your own best friend. Make, make a decision that nobody can love you the way you can love yourself mm. and that you're walking around with you all day long. So, you know, how are you ever going to get – how am I ever going to feel love if I can't somehow work on that one thing? Like how can I love myself just by choosing to do it, You know, mm-hmm. just continually saying there's nobody in this room right now but me. At least I can love me. You know, mm-hmm. or you can trust in you can trust in your a higher power that's got your back. You can say, you know, there's got to be somebody who loves me out there, you know, and right. let yourself feel the love from them because it, I believe that really is the way it is. There's there's all kinds of beings that are focused on us that love us, but mm-hmm. what if we just cultivate the ability to trust that we're loved, and and cultivate the ability to love ourselves by just making a decision. I'm going to be my best friend from now on. I'm mm-hmm. going to be my very best friend, and I'm never going to make myself wrong again. If you can help it, I mean, of course you will. <laughs> but you know, it's like you—you you kind of make yeah. that decision that no matter what happens, I'm going to forgive myself. No matter what happens, I'm going to give myself a break, and I'm not going to keep making myself wrong. It's funny as you were um, talking about that, the way you were phrasing it was was reminding me of a very old James Bond movie. 
uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, the theme song was, Nobody Does It Better. And that's exactly what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Carly Simon singing in my head. <laughs> Nobody does it better. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> now, January has a question. She says, I'm going for a job interview that I want to happen. How can I manifest it? And, and she says she also has a test on Monday. So I guess that's part of the question. So um, I, I don't think she has any trouble manifesting the job at interview. I think what she wants is the job. Um, so as she's going into the job, <laughs> obviously, because <laughs> the job interview, she's already got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. So how about some ideas on how to manifest the job? I think we go with what Walt said. You visualize yourself already having the job. Visualize yourself. Mm. Uh oh. Oh, internet, froze internet, up. Internet, internet, Sorry, guys. Internet, yeah, internet, internet again. There it is. Okay. <laughs> every once in a while. Every once in a while. <laughs> try, try it again. Only twice an episode, though. <laughs> Only twice an episode, yeah. yes. Okay, so you've had your two. You're done. <laughs> I have my two. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so give it another shot. What were you saying? Yeah, I was saying visualize yourself sitting at the cubicle and already decorating your desk and, and enjoying your coworkers and working the job. That's good. That's a good one, yeah, because that's an easy one to play, right? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty easy to make up. Or if it, maybe it's not a cubicle. Maybe you're not actually working in an office situation. Well, whatever the job yeah. is. <laughs> but but the point is you can visualize it because you know what it is you want right. to do. You're, you're interviewing for it because you want to be doing that. So putting yeah, that little exactly. vignette together is pretty darn easy, really. You just have to mm -hmm. put it in there and put it into your mind. And, and uh, I like recommending what Neville Goddard uh, suggests. He suggests that... Um, take advantage of the vignette of being congratulated. Um, he mm -hmm. told he told the story about the guy who wanted to get a he, he wanted to have a, a franchise of an Arthur Murray studio, you know, Arthur Murray dance class studio, and his vignette was being congratulated by the regional director for having uh, been awarded a franchise, and so he kept, kept playing the, the vignette of, of of this guy shaking his hand, and and mm -hmm. the the uh, thing that Neville points out is it's very important to make yourself part of it. Don't be the observer. Be a part of the scene. Mm. So, he, so his hand was the one shaking hands, right? Um, right. Another way Neville describes it is, is, is the difference between seeing a ladder and watching somebody climb the ladder and actually going up to the ladder and feeling the sides of the ladder and feeling the rungs and, mm -hmm. and putting your feet on the rungs and walking up the ladder. That, that if That's what the difference is. You want to put yourself that's into the scene do. like that. Uh, well... It's harder to do, but so is mirror exercise. <laughs> I mean, looking in the mirror and actively mm -hmm. saying to yourself, sure. I love you, that's pretty hard too. <laughs> but, and you visualization, know. visualization is a skill that we develop too. You know, it's like mm -hmm. we, we didn't grow up, you know, if we would have had classes in grade school about how to visualize, we'd all be living different lives because it's a skill. I mean, we do use our imaginations a lot, but I, I, I really realize that you got to spend five to ten minutes a day sitting in a chair or laying down on your couch or something and run those pictures through your head of, you know, even of yourself spending the money that you get from your job. You know, see yourself, well, what do you want that money for? See yourself doing those fun things or going out to the store and buying a ton of food. And, you know, you've got, you've got plenty of money, so you're enjoying the, the fruits of your labor. And you also, mm -hmm. like you said, see yourself at that job already having gotten it. See the... This guy in the interview congratulating you and shaking your hand saying, well, you got the job. Fantastic. You know, and we'll see you on Monday. Right. You, you see all that stuff taking place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And that confidence that it will and that that trust that the universe, there's no reason the universe doesn't want you to be successful and right. just sort of trust that right. there's no reason why I can't be successful. So I'm going to just give up the idea that, and and if, if not this, then something better will come. Mm -hmm. you know, so you know this, the universe will un unfold this for me in the most wonderful way possible. I just have to be surrendered to the fact that it's going to happen. You know, I'm going to end up with a really good job. If not this one, then it's going to be another one, mm -hmm. and it's going to come in the right timing. But yeah, it takes a lot of faith to just not keep sabotaging ourselves by telling ourselves, you know, oh my God, what if I don't get this job? Oh my God. I need this money so bad. And you know, it's like it reminds all me those the, old, oh, I, my God, stories. Are I, I'm, I'm thinking of movies today. And the movie that I'm thinking of is a chorus line. But 
the very first song says, Oh God, I need this job. And, and you have the, the dancers who are trying to get into the chorus line because they're desperate to, to further their career by actually being able to pay the bills, you know? I need this yeah, job yeah, so yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, desperation and, desperation and impatience sabotage me all the time. You know, like if I'm mm-hmm. trying too hard and I'm desperate about it, I, man, yeah. Yeah. Got to let go of that stuff or you do. somehow. Which ties relax. into the next question we're getting, actually. This is from Lynn. Um, and uh, Lynn, is she says, I'm a would-be children's author with about 10 stories in so many pieces, but I'm constantly finding reasons not to work at it. I feel like the clutter or messy garage is holding me back. How do I get past all the excuses? Good question. How do you get past all the excuses? Just do it. Clean up the garage. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that simple. If these these things are getting in your way, fix them and and keep it moving. It's a good point. I mean, it seems what, so, it seems so simple is... to say that. Like, you know, well, well why didn't I think yeah. of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when people tell me because I'm an insomniac, they're like, "Well, have you tried closing your eyes?" <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try laying in the bed? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Have you tried yes. turning off the light? No, yeah, I didn't yeah, do yeah. that one either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, have you tried making the bed? Oh, no, no. That's, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's the opposite effect. <laughs> Uh, but it's a good point. I mean, it's very, it's a very straightforward point. If you, if you're being bothered by clutter, get the clutter out of the way. I mean, literally, yeah. and even if you can't bring yourself to clean up the clutter, just get a plastic bag, a great big trash bag, and put all the clutter in the trash bag, put it over in the corner, and now the clutter's out of the way. You don't have to throw the trash bag out. You, know, you can go through it later, but now you got the clutter out of the way, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that's one of the big things for cluttering is to get, get yourself uh 10 boxes or however many you need and um, label each box with what's in there, but just put everything in a box and stack all the boxes in one place with the labels of what's in those boxes. And then everything looks great. And then you go back in and you start writing on your children's stories, you know, and one way to get your children's stories written is push butt in a chair for a, a certain given period of time and say, every day I'm going to put my butt in this chair for two hours and and I'm, I'm going to commit to 250 words, and that's it. But if you did that every day for a year, you would have an entire book written by the end of the year. If you just wrote 250 words a day or even five days a week and then take two days off, you know, you would write. You would get a lot written. But this making that routine is, is kind of important. I know that's what I have to do to get – I'm I'm writing modules right now for workshops, and if I don't create a time to do it, it just doesn't get done. You know, it's just I have to make a time, and I had to declutter a ton of stuff before I could convince myself because I felt if my head was full of clutter and my mm-hmm. garage was full of clutter and my upstairs bedroom was full of clutter. But what I did is I just slowly worked on the clutter, and you know, first you might have to put it all in boxes, but then once in a while. Take one or two of those boxes, you know, have a little table set up somewhere, take one or two of the boxes, open them up, get rid of that stuff, go back in, do your two hours of writing, and then go go for a walk and go do something fun. You know, create create a little bit of a routine where you get a little something done every day. And mm-hmm. but that that seems hard for us, but I think we that's the minimum discipline, right? I mean otherwise it, yeah, I think I continue to spin my wheels forever. <laughs> I think it's actually even <laughs> perhaps an easier way to do it. I, I mean, not, not, mm-hmm. that, not that that isn't an effective way, but I think it's an easier way. Because uh, there's also kind of a risk there that if you plop yourself down like that and force yourself to sit in that chair, you're forcing yourself to do something you really don't want to do. And so now you start developing an aversion to the thing that you really want to be doing. So you've got a little bit of a risk. But we don't have to even have that risk, I don't think. We can use the same kind of, of methods that we use for attracting you know, the, the the job from the job interview or the money for whatever it is we want the money for or, or, you know, any of this kind of thing by simply creating the vignette of what it's like to enjoyably sit down and, and get excited about writing the book or enjoyably yeah. get excited about having the clear space. You know, we, we can visualize this stuff. 
And we, we can imagine how, how good it feels and get ourselves into the good feeling place. Because really, I would say it's not being in the good feeling place that causes the problem. It isn't the clutter. It isn't the excuses. It isn't the stuff that, you know, it isn't the fact that the, the stories are in pieces. It's that we don't feel good about it. We just got to learn how to feel good about it. So right. anything that we can do to create a vision, a, a, a vignette of feeling good about the thing that we most like doing. Well, first of all, it's an easy vignette to create because we already know what we like about it. And secondly, it's one we can do. It, it's, we're we're going to be very unlikely to put it off. I mean, that was the big complaint, right? She said, I, I have all these excuses I make. Well, you stop making excuses when you're actually doing what you love. When you, It's like right. with, with my wife. My wife uh, has, for years and years, talked about how she doesn't like getting up early. She really, really doesn't like getting up early. <laughs> until she discovered tag sailing. And after she just, she loves tag sailing. She loves going out and finding stuff, finding a bargain and trying to resell it on Craigslist or something like that. She just loves doing that kind of thing. Hmm. And she hasn't done it lately, but she really was into it for a while. And, and when she was into it, Saturday morning would come along and the woman who would not want to be up before eight o'clock was up bright and early at five thirty, ready, ready to go out the door at six to hit the first tag sale saying, I'll see you in about six hours. <laughs> Why? Because she loved it. She was so psyched yeah. about it. It felt good to mm-hmm. her. She had tapped into the good feeling. So that's really what I think the solution mm-hmm. is. You've got to find where the good feeling is. So far, you've been looking all this, at all the stuff that doesn't feel good. The excuses, the, the clutter, you know, the, the stories and pieces. That stuff doesn't feel good. What's the part that feels good? Talk right. about that one for a while. What's what's any part of your life that feels good? Well, like yeah. if you can go do go do something in even some other area of of your life, it'll pull up these other areas. Like if you get really happy in one part of your life, it'll it can pull up the other areas, and you all of a sudden want to sit down and write because you were so happy because you started going dancing or because you started going on beautiful walks in nature or you started to dance around your mm-hmm. house more to beautiful music and you created a, a sense of inspiration in your life and it just all of a sudden you found yourself wanting to go declutter the garage or wanting to go and write on your children's stories because you started having more fun in general in life mm-hmm. and you quit worrying about the fact that you weren't getting done these other things you know mm-hmm. you quit quit having that be the center of your life like oh why can't i make these things happen you know absolutely we st- we stress we stress out too hard about the stuff that oh. we think is going to make us happy, and in the meantime, we're we're not happy. You know, we're, we are we're, so we're rough not. on ourselves. We're, I mean, really, I, I have come to appreciate that, particularly in the last year, just how rough we can be on ourselves. We're just we're we're, mm-hmm. we're brutal. We're tougher than than our worst bullying critic. I mean, we're just yeah. we, we beat ourselves up daily, and it's time to stop. It's time to start being mm-hmm. gentle. It's time to start feeling kind about ourselves instead of ugh got to force myself to do this stuff I don't want to do that I really want to do. What? What yeah. kind of logic is that? <laughs> <laughs> Meditation will help there too because yeah, it we does. get more into a place where we get neutral about everything. And then when you come out of meditation, you often feel like, well, why wouldn't I want to just sit down and write my children's stories? I feel so good, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and uh, uh, Herbert uh I think this was tying back to the question about money, but he he shared an interesting insight. He said, I just had this happen to me. I sent out that I wanted money, had a chance to acquire it, and didn't. And I didn't allow it to get me down. Hmm. Which is a really, really good point. You know, we, 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 we put something out and it doesn't show up because we're resisting in some way that we aren't even perhaps aware of. And we get down on ourselves. We should actually do just the opposite. We should get excited about the fact that we got there part way. We just have to go the rest of the way and get back into that positive feeling place again and just you know keep putting it out there and keep working on on you know paying attention if we notice any resistances that come up so that we can pull them out, you know, feel them a little bit and say, okay, I'm done with that. Put it aside. I, I release that resistance. Uh, but the one thing we don't want to do is just get down about it because all we're doing is going backward at that point. In fact, he even has a little phrase he has. He says, I, I know I am money and it will materialize physically, which is good. That's very good. I like it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, Lynn actually gave us a, a little feedback on what she's doing. Let's see. Oh, she's the, the comments are, are flowing a little bit faster than I can read them. 
But let me see if I can just <laughs> copy and paste. That way I can get it. She says, I fill up a garbage bin and run it out the door. Start another a donation bin, fill and run it out. Okay, good. All right. Yay. See? So that's what you want to do. That's really good. <laughs> and we're getting some good feedback, too. People telling us, uh, Jennifer saying, you are all amazing. I would love to share my multi-sensory vision boards app subliminal vision boards app it is changing people's lives please let me know how i could collaborate with you love and light well i think you just did <laughs> 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 you know, put a link in uh, you know, put a little reply to your thing there and uh, a link to whatever it is that you want us to link to and uh, people will be able to find your vision board app so thank you very much for that and lynn also came back love this info to be kinder to myself and visualize the good feelings of the garage and stop punishing myself as I do punish myself. Yeah, you're not the only one, Lynn. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> you are it. not the only one. <laughs> we all are guilty of this. But the good news is yeah. we're recognizing it. That's that's what the uh, 12 step programs say, right? You know, the first thing, the first step is recognizing you got a problem. Okay. We recognize we got a problem. Yep. We just passed the first step. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the making peace with it, you know. It if is. you don't accept the way it is, you can't, it can't change because then you're resisting it all the time. Right. It just gets bigger, you know? It just persists. What you persist, you, you got to accept it, love it, embrace it, welcome at your fire, and then go on to the next thing once you're just at peace with the fact, hey, I'm, I'm not doing my work and oh well. Next, what's next, you know? I can, mm-hmm. I can do something inspiring. I can do something fun. I can write about something I appreciate, you know? I can, Sort one box. I don't have to sort ten boxes. I can, you know, I can go for a walk. I, you know, find something that feels good. You know, mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carl Jung. That's who uh, came up with that uh, "what you resist persists" phrase. So you're, you're tapping Did into. He? Yeah, that was him. He's he's okay. the one who originated that one. So you're, you're tapping into a, a high level psychotherapist psychologist. There, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, got a couple minutes and I want to make sure I get a couple messages in here. Please share the fact that you're liking this because we're getting a lot of good uh, likes on this, a lot of eyeballs watching, which is really good. And uh, we, we want to get the word out to more people because the reason you found out about this is somebody shared it with you. You know, So pass it along. Treat it like a chain letter. This is one time a chain letter is actually a good thing. <laughs> this is the kind of chain letter you want to pass along because getting a daily dose of happy into everybody's uh, um days into their lives is, is, a, is a very good thing. And, and look what it's doing for you. So, you know, put out a post somewhere on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or, you know, m- t- take a screenshot of what we're doing, and put it on Instagram or, or put something in Reddit or tweet it or something. But every time that we're doing these, please put it out there because we want more and more people to get their daily dose of happy. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? The links are in most of the places where we're posting this stuff. Just, you know, click the appropriate link for either an Apple device or an Android type device, and it'll just walk you right through it. And uh, that way you get all the episodes coming right to your smartphone. So please subscribe, please share, and please keep those cards and letters coming and keep uh, posting the notes and so forth, because that's what's making this this whole thing work. And and we're loving every second of it. Um, So, okay, we got like uh, a minute, two minutes left before the music. So I'm going to go to Tom first. Tom, what's the big takeaway from today's Q&A? What's the, what's the best piece of information you, you saw or heard or maybe even said today? Uh, I heard myself saying the word relax a lot, and I realize that's, that's a huge <laughs> part of it is to chill out. Mm. Um, so I'd say chill out, write down the things that you are grateful for, the things you do appreciate. Write, make a little list every day if you can. And those, those are a couple good things, really good things. Absolutely. I, agree I could go that. on and on, but I'm not going to. Well, you're good at that. <laughs> you, you, oh, yeah. you, you're like verbose. You just keep going. At it. You're like a fountain, this, this flowing fountain of, of information that just keeps coming out and coming out and coming out. So that's cool. It's good stuff. And Alex, what's your, what's your takeaway? What, what's the one message that you think has resonated the most that you want to leave people with today? I would say get out of your own way, be grateful, and trust the universe. Yeah, that's, that's, that's simple. That's a good, simple approach, isn't it? Easy to say, mm-hmm. not so easy to do perhaps some days, but right. it's definitely where we're getting to, <laughs> yeah. right? But we can develop it. We're developing yes. those skills, mm-hmm. you know? Exactly they, true. They grow day by day. Yeah. How about you, Walt? What, what are your, what's your big takeaway? My takeaway is I love our listeners. I love you guys. I love all of us. I mean, I am so grateful oh. for everything that is happening with this podcast. I, I love uh, the live streaming that we're doing. Um, I love the questions that we're getting. I love the insights that we're getting from the audience. 
and I want more and more and more of it. I am so greedy. I want more and more and more and more. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing it every day, twice a day. That's twice a day, doing. absolutely. We're live streaming everyone we can live stream. Whatever Facebook lets yeah. us do it, which is most of the time. So, yeah. <laughs> no, <that's good laughs> your biggest threat is if you get too happy. you got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's even possible, but I'll, I'll tell you what. I will test to see if I can get too happy. And if I can, I'll let you know about it. How about that? <laughs> You already seem to be that, just looking at you. You're, you're pretty friggin' happy. Oh, this is great. Well, thank you guys for doing this. Thanks to our audience for tuning in live. And uh, thanks to our podcast listening audience who listen after the fact because we love all of you. And we'll see you all next time here on Galloway Today. Goodbye, everybody. Every, everybody dance. <laughs> Come on. Let's dance. <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs>